those uh, one of those Alexa cameras. Not Alexa. Whatever the what are they? Uh, Arlo. What is that? Just another security. Oh, well, security you have it camera. inside the house? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, no, because oh. robots are watching. You know, I figured that way. I don't know. That way, if somebody tries to break in my house, because like normally we don't clean up after the kids really after they play, so it just turns into Home Alone. So if somebody okay. actually tried to break in, they would like probably fall on a bunch of things before they even got up. So you leave purposefully and strategically leave Lego and things around the house. Not Legos yet. They're Mega Blocks and they're like this big. So they're oh. only two. But you know, like I wonder if I wonder if Mega Blocks or Duplo like are they just as deadly? Probably. Like do they hurt just as much to step on? Considering that I have accidentally tripped on a lot of things going to like get a water or by water I mean beer uh, in the middle of the night, then yes, it does hurt. Oh. You can well, trip and fall. Well, that's I'm glad I don't have when anything. When you fall, you fall on a bunch of other stuff. I usually just fall on all my airsoft crap that's laying on my floors. You should fix that. I don't have any storage. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the uh, latest episode of the Not So Round Table. If you watched last time, uh, you, we gave you a prompt uh, for the comments section, and you guys wrote in to answer that prompt. And uh, a couple of the questions we asked in last episode was, is airsoft competitive? And uh, should it be considered a sport or a hobby? A spobby. Or a... Spobby? I like hort. that. I like hort? spobby better than hort. Or Hort doesn't have a nice ring to it. No, it doesn't. But spobby's cool. Yes. Yeah, spobby's It's my cool. spobby. Yeah. Yeah. Extreme mm. spobby. I can't imagine... I can't imagine a speed softer telling people it's their spobby. Yeah. Maybe a Milson player. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Uh, so I guess starting off... And uh, stay tuned to the end of the episode, by the way, and uh, and we'll we'll have a prompt for for the next episode. So, starting off, is airsoft competitive? So, what's interesting? I don't know about yourself, but when I was reading some of the comments mm -hmm. and some of the, you you have a good discussion base going on the last uh, a last um, comment section. Yeah. At first, when we said this was our prompt, my mind was made up that it was not a sport at all. Mm -hmm. And it was considered an athletic hobby, or I could, you know, I consider it a, that. Mm -hmm. I'm st still feel that it's more of a hobby than a sport. However, I am more open now to interpretation versus before. I was just like, no, okay. it's a hobby. Okay. But I now, think we've talked about it like, mm -hmm. on way earlier episodes of Not Around Table as well. I think we both kind of hinted at our opinion on whether it was a sport or hobby. I forgot what episode number it was. If you guys have seen all the answered episodes, let us know what episode it was yeah, that we last still... talked about, whether it was a sport or hobby. And <laughs> it was really brief, so. Well, so, and my argument for it is is this, is that you have, so some people um, clarify it as like a good example of, of um, one of these, uh, specifically this comment here from James Murphy stated that uh, from the dictionary, an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against others or others for entertainment, airsoft is considered a sport. That's, his, that's from the defi definition of... And this is often the definition that I use when I'm having this conversation with people because as defined by Miriam Webster... Great guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Miriam, great guy, defines a lot of things. Uh, it's a sport. By definition. By definition, yes. Uh, but I, I think we should... I think we should first, like... Is airsoft competitive? Yes and no. Okay. Um, and it, you could say that it is competitive in a sense that you have places to be competitive. Right, right, right. But in terms of does it have the ability to be competitive in terms of unified rules, standardization, referees, all that stuff? It's very no because it's right. all over the place. So I, I wouldn't... Hmm. That's that's this is the interesting thing, right? Because let's let's take backyard airsoft games out of this for now. Because I I think no, that's, that's everyone that's in the world can agree that backyard airsoft games or woods games for fun are are just a hobby, um, just like any using any sporting equipment not in a sporting setting. So for example, a soccer is a sport, but you can or football is a sport, but you can play football without the rules and referees and teams, right? So True. Same thing. RC cars. Or but you're following the same right. sort of rules. Right. Uh, and, and you're I using have... the same so thing to play with. 
Yeah, so right. an example would be that I would use is skiing. So skiing, you have competitive skiing in, a certain, in terms of downhill Olympic style skiing, or you have I'm going skiing for the weekend right. or snowboarding, right. and you're skiing just for fun. Right. That is where you can kind of go either or. Right, so now, with that aside, if someone goes to a local field, and that local field has divided people up into teams, and there's a clear winner and loser at the end of that game, is that now not a sporting event? It is a competitive sporting event, yes. So it's both. Yes. Like it can't, like there is no, it's not, it's neither a sport nor is it a hobby, it's both. It's a sport and a hobby. Like every other sport. Yes. Like, li like literally everything that you can play can be a sport and a hobby. As long as there's a winner and a loser and de designated teams. Do you think, I think maybe myself, the reason I felt that it didn't meet the sport realm was because there was no way to actively define a winner or a loser right. because of, I mean, yes, if you look at, if you look at, let's say football, okay, yes, there are cheating things in football where you can get penalized or maybe you get away with it. But in the end of the day, you're getting, you're scoring a touchdown or getting a mm -hmm. field goal versus airsoft it's literally everything is based around you shooting another player and him calling himself out. So that's right. maybe where I got hung up on I get hung up on in terms of defining it as as a competitive sport. Right. So that kind of brings us to um, kind of our second comment. Okay. Uh, so Josh Feliciano uh, commented uh, as more of a question and he said uh, that his question was for us was why aren't there more leagues outdoor and millstem style, style leagues team versus team keeping track of winning and losing and then a playoff at the end of the season how do we go about setting up millstem style um, leagues and this to me this is this is kind of the the ending question to our first prompt of what makes a sport a competitive sport for every other sport is a unified set of rules. Correct. And we can sit here and, and go by the, the definition in the dictionary of what a sport is, but unless you have everybody agreeing to the same rule set, Airsoft is going to stagnate in terms of its competitive sport nature. Yes, it's a sporting hobby, uh, but until all of the fields and all of the locations and all of the organizations attempting to make a sport out of airsoft or an official sport like they all have to agree on a set of rules and by doing that you can have different leagues like you can have a milsim league because you've all agreed to the same rule set and you can have teams that can practice to that rule set um, the same thing with tracking wins and losses it's a lot easier to track wins and losses when you've all agreed on the same rules uh, i don't know that you'd ever have a milsim league so, like, the biggest, the biggest comment I have towards this question, and it's, I think it's kind of like the big question in terms of if you can make a competitive airsoft scene. The problem I see is there's too many, very, too many people trying to do too, too much of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you have people trying to do this here, people trying to do this out on the East Coast, this in the Midwest. This, no one's trying to use their skills to create something that is national, right, in right. my opinion. So you have people, you know, I'd, I'd say like, you know, I'd say SpeedQB is probably the closest representation of terms of somebody trying to create something that's national or international. Mm -hmm. Then you have the recent Battle Arena, which is also something that's already international that's trying to become more international. It is very tough, but they all have different rule sets. Right. Everybody's trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Like, we like some of these rules, but ours is going to be 350 capped. Or ours, we don't have a minimum engagement distance. It's like, yeah, okay, so why, why do you need a special snowflake your specific event? At the detriment of your... So, basically, if everybody's trying to compete against each other in regards to, let's say... I'm talking about competing in terms of competition companies mm -hmm. competing against each other. Right. If you're fighting SpeedQB because yours is D Battle Arena or you create Milsim League or other... Mm -hmm. There's tons of them out mm -hmm. there. Then they're all competing having, against exactly. each other that are different and they're, like, confusing players. Like, how this is different than this. Right. Imagine if you go from playing SpeedQB all the time and you go to a Battle Arena and it's completely different rules. So, instead of having potentially... A thousand people in your league, 
now because you have four different leagues, all with different rules, people are going to go with the one that is closest to them or that they like the most, and you might have 250 players instead of the potential thousand you could have had. Correct. So that's the detriment, is the more finite you get with your specific rule set that isn't a broad agreed upon rule set, the less people uh, potentially will play. Well, also the less sponsorships that you can gear up towards it to, so it has the financial support to survive and to grow, because it's not hard to create it's not hard to create a league for one arena, like one field, you know, one arena in SoCal can create a league for itself, no problem. One league in Atlanta, Georgia can create, a, you know, all that stuff is right. not an issue. It's how do you make this bigger than what it is? You have to standardize it. Right, and instead of it being one owner of a league, I think there needs to be a governing body for Airsoft. Correct. In, at least you'd have to start on a national level. But I think that it should be, you know, a democratically elected league that is run by so like here, here's a variety of people. Here's another problem that happens, right? So you have, you have Speak UB, right, as a brand. Now, the problem is, is could you show up to a Speak UB competition dressed in Milsom equipment? Yes or no? Absolutely yes. You can play it however you want in terms of how it's defined. If you want to show up in multicam and wear these kind of chest rigs and you, why, do, you know, why does one have to match a specific it category of others? That is another problem. You is, may not win, it, but... It's fine. You know, I'm just saying that you can structure it however you want to to work within all realms of Airsoft. So moving, moving forward, and I think this kind of goes along with what we're saying too, is the comment from David Rogers, uh, who answered the prompt from, from last week's episode, saying... Uh, Airsoft is an extreme sport, but not entirely competitive. If games were composed of four to eight man teams, or women teams, uh, and used a different method to call hits from the current way, i.e. the honor system, then it would be more competitive, like paintball or an FPS video game, first person shooter. I'm sure you all know that. I don't know why I've defined that. Sorry. I don't care. It's okay, Chris, don't help. You just Chris, do, you just do, help me. No, you just do it by hand. You just do that out of habit. Yeah. Uh, rather, than an air, uh, rather than Airsoft as a whole, I see parts of Airsoft coming, becoming more competitive in a tournament style. And I think he's hitting the nail on the head here uh, based on what we've literally just talked about. But that brings up, that brings up a key component here. I know that uh, at Palooza, we had a whole bunch of people try out the gun power system. And... If nothing else, uh, the gun power system highlighted how easy it was to tell who won the round. Mm -hmm. there, there was two versus two, and there was one clear winner at the end. And you got shot a lot in the process before. Like, I still have the wounds from that, but you had to hit right. them here or here. So that's, so that's the drawback, is it's not an entire body of coverage. I would argue that that's probably better because it's going to train shooters to actually aim instead of just firing off shots willy-nilly. Like You can shoot the guy all you want in the arm, but it's not going to call a hit until you can aim center of mass. I don't see that as a negative, but that system would enable competitive play to eliminate the need for an honor system. Correct. And what's great is there's no arguments of who shot who, shoot for, who, shot who first. And it literally shuts when you the and I, off. When you and I played against each other at Chacho, Show, it was, I was shooting at you the exact time you were shooting at me, and I mine was blocked because you hit me first. Mm -hmm. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's, it, there's no other, right. does, you know, and, and the thing is, is so you talk about paintball, right? Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly curious of how many people who are into really competitive airsoft or ever went to like a really competitive paintball game. Because one thing that you'll notice, if you really go to those games, you'll watch somebody playing, they'll get hit, and they're just going to keep shooting until the ref calls them out. Really? Yes. Even though paint is splattering right in front of their face mask. Sorry. I just had some water. I didn't mean to spray it. Um, <laughs> you know, paint can be spraying right into their face yeah. mask, and they'll still keep shooting until the rep taps them out. And then, so, and then when they are like, oh, okay. I go, no. oh, oh, I'm out? Oh, yeah. just hold on. So, while, so like, paint off. when you think about that, from a competitive nature where people have the ability, who have a marking system that is bright, mm -hmm. that is reliable to see from distance mm -hmm. and all that, they are set up in the rules to keep shooting until... And still don't call their hits. Yes, theoretically, they're still not calling their yeah. hits. Go look at, go look at like, videos from, um, you know, like, HK Army or any of those, in terms of, like, you'll see people wipe, you know, right, wipe right. right off the, you know, they get shot in the gun, they'll just wipe it immediately. Before they, like, the, the cheating is part of that game. It's just part of the game. Just like cheating in national sports, in football, hockey, soccer, cheating is part of the game, what you get away with. And to finally see a company develop a product that functions and can be used to help make Airsoft more competitive, I think is the right direction. Uh, I think 
as technology gets better, the system will be more compact and maybe a little bit more, dare I say, attractive. Yeah, I uh, mean, you know, they're, they're, I mean, the helmet is effective. It's just not the coolest looking helmet on the planet, right? So you, if, you couldn't, like, like for example, you have to then dwell into this part of the hobby where you want it to be competitive, you have to play with this equipment. If you want to use your own equipment, then you're kind of going the more hobby route. Because if you want to go, oh, I want to wear my vest and my helmet and my goggles and my gun, then you're going into the realm where you're just like, you know, hey, you're just going to a big event and you're just having a good time and you're playing airsoft as it's initially meant to be played as an honor system. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to have it go into where cash prizes are involved or anything like that, you have to have a legitimate way of, of and that is well, and speaking, a drawback. So speaking of standardizations, Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Um, this question from Ethan Sober said, if airsoft becomes competitive sport, what rules would you enable, allow HPA, what mods are allowed, etc.? All right, so I think, I think this really is kind of part of that whole, okay, so what do you allow, what don't you allow, and what do you make standardized, right? So is it as something as simple as, okay, everyone's limited to 400 FPS, or everyone's limited to 300 FPS, no matter how you'd like to accomplish it. But then we all know that HPA is rated a little bit differently, right? We don't go off of, a, we don't go off of FPS, so do we limit people to joules in competition? Is there a limit to how fast your, your trigger can actuate your gun? Is there, there a limit to... There has to, to be. There has, there, you have to set some boundaries in terms of maybe you create different classes, in terms of you have an HPA division or a you know, standard division or mm -hmm. something like that. You have to, it's the same way with competitive shooting. Right. The competitive shoot, like if you, if you go shoot IDPA or whatever, they have different classes of categories. If you're shooting this Glock is in a different category from this revolver. It's not fair to put them in the same category. Right, right, a right. Competitive right. shoot of an environment. You have to treat airsoft almost the same way. And, I don't see anything And people wrong need with to accept that. Yeah. People need to accept that, that it is, okay, if, if you're going to be in this division, these are the equipment that is allowed for this division. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying an H, I'm not saying that an AEG user couldn't come into the HPA division and use an AEG that's just as good as an HPA gun. You can create them, but... But why you, would like why would you if you have a division for AEGs and you have a division for HPA? There's but, no reason. But let's to say have you had them. let's say you had uh, you know uh, you wouldn't even call it an HPA division. Let's just call it you call it a this it meets these requirements. However you meet those requirements is up to you. So in terms of you can have a speed trigger, you can have this. You, then if there would be another division, stock gun only. Like literally, mm -hmm. like you have to use a stock gun, and you, these are these are the you know, doesn't mean you can go out and buy an umbrella gun and say it's a stock gun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know you have well you have. If you purchased it that way, doesn't that count as a stock gun? No, because it's an upgraded stock gun. It's an upgraded gun. Yeah. It's it's so it's, it's you basically we can't decide the rules for this. No. Yeah, so like, there has to be a governing body that that everybody can agree to because you can't have George and I over here dictating the rules because clearly here, here's a good we example. Have, we have too many different opinions. Here's a good example, and you're a car guy, so you understand this. Yeah. Formula One. Okay, mm -hmm. so each each what are they called? Uh, each um, team team can you know or you know so a Ferrari whoever they're all creating their own versions of what they have mm -hmm. they can create a car that can do something a little bit better than another car mm -hmm. but they're all trying to compete on the same track well, they so there's a unifying there's a unifying governing set of rules yes. that you have to abide by yes. and how you choose to accomplish uh, performance goals to meet or you know to 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 Achieve. To achieve the goals you want, but within the rule set is is how everyone is kind of on the same playing field. But F one's a really terrible example because of money and yes. politics. Yes, yes, no, because if if you look at it, you can look at how successful Mercedes has been in the last five years and how extremely successful they are right now. Why the or, midfield doesn't change? Or you change. had, or you had, uh, you know, um, you had different different uh, contract or uh, you know different manufacturers doing good at different times you know you look at like when that Williams car came out that just dominated everybody in like the 90s for like a season and then because it had that new trans you know that new uh, not transmission it had that new uh, suspension system it gave it it's an advantage over everybody else so like honestly it would almost be better like I don't know maybe even Formula One would be better if everybody was literally in the same car and it was just driver versus driver but that's not how they've set up Formula right, One. Right, right. So, but well, I'm, I mean, I'm there are other forms. It's of an example of what to maybe maybe you don't want to accomplish this. Maybe you want it to be more like like this, where there's different guidelines. You know, like right. or like so like shooting competitions for real firearms, right? Like so, I was looking into recently uh, like pistol shooting competitions, mm -hmm. and you have a stock class which allows for literally no modification, right. and then you have an unlimited class which is do whatever you want, right? And then there's varying ones in between that. 
And so I think Airsoft could be done the same way. You have a stock class, you have an unlimited class, and then you have specific classes. Like if you want to do an HPA only tournament, you can sign up for that. If you want to do an AEG only tournament, you can sign up for that. Um, but I think it will require someone to lay out specific rules for each uh, division and then for fields that participate in um, these competitions to do an airsoft league of competitive airsoft play. It doesn't matter what your rules are day to day, but as long as your rules for those competitions are a unified structured rule set, I think it's achievable. And you can even have all the FPSs, the rate per fight, you know, semi only. You could have a lot of these things. It's just we know we know that a speed trigger on an HPA system can be faster than most AEG triggers. You know, you know. So it it you just have to figure out a way to level the playing field as best you can. Maybe you have a pistol only class. Maybe, That'd be cool. You know, like you could do different things to um, to kind of make it make it better. Actually, I think if anything, I think airsoft has more potential of being competitive in the realm of pistols only, because it's easier to control, if that makes sense, in terms sure. of, you know, you can, yes, sure, you can have a speed trigger, but at the same time, that person with a stock gun has a much more equal chance against you, even though you have a speed trigger, than somebody with a stock right. gun versus a HPA or, a, or an umbrella armory or a hopped up EPS gun. They have a, the, the gap is not as right. big as it is with AEGs. Right. So maybe that's, maybe that's how you could do it. I don't know. So what do you guys think? In the comments below, if you guys want to wrap up any final thoughts on anything we've talked about in this episode about whether it's a sport or a hobby, and if so, uh, what kind of unifying rule sets would you like to see? Would you like to see different tournament styles or divisions? And do you think that there's a place for competitive milsim that has winners and losers in a way that can be measured? Well, I mean, we're ending the, this part of the show, but just on a, a quick last note is, you know, most of the milsim companies do define a winner and a loser through yes. objectives. But again, it's so big and it's so it could be skewed in any way, shape, right. or form. And how many Milsim games have we been to where they're like, Green's doing too well, we need to back them yeah, off? Like, that's not it, really it, a competition there. Because if you get destroyed, you get destroyed. Correct. So, Their goal is about creating a fun experience, right. not necessarily defining a winner and a loser. Right. But they announce that there's a winner and a loser just so that way people feel like there's a winner and a loser. What I would love to see is a Milsim company do what AMS started doing and they don't do so much anymore. Like I want somebody to hold an event that is purely dams. And when you sign up, you sign up and you can participate in four dam missions for the weekend. And they bring in a staff with actors scripted out and have a location where if they bring in a hundred people, you know, 20 squads of five, and then each one can run the dam four times, and that's all they do all weekend. It's scripted, you run a dam, you get to do cool stuff, blow stuff up, do that as an entire event structure. Uh, no one's done that yet. Some people have tried. It's just not there. It's still not there yet. Right, right, right. Um, there's too much ego involved in some of it that, um, you know, or, you know, stuff like that. People you also have got to find tried. actors that are willing to get shot <laughs> two hours two, Yes, yes, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. Um, and also... Um, they're all, you know, like Battle Arena is kind of similar to that in terms of it's not a damn mission, but it's like you're playing against, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. Moving forward, uh, let's give you the prompt for next week. Our airsoft guns. Next month. What? Next month. Sorry. Month. <laughs> it's, it's, we're in a month schedule. <laughs> George, you want to handle this since clearly I don't know what I'm doing? Sure. Uh, June prompt, uh, what we're going to be doing is talking about single shots. Okay, so are all single shots the same? A good example is, is a single shot shotgun also a sniper rifle? Or is a sniper rifle a glorified shotgun? Since they really don't go that much farther than <laughs> AEGs. Let us know in the comment section below whether you think individual single shot guns like shotguns and sniper rifles are the same. Should they be considered the same? Does barrel length really matter in Airsoft? We'll see you next month. Comment below.